to our next speaker quite nicely, David McPhee. Uh, David is a composed, unruffled and upstanding individual who quietly gets things done in the most efficient manner. And I'm sure he's clearly destined to scale the dizzy heights at Perth and Kinross Council where he's been employed within local government community care services since 1993. Uh, he currently occupies the post of Senior Commissioning and Contracts Officer and plays a lead role in qualities coordinating a number of initiatives for those with protected characters. This has seen him work closely with showraces in Red Car, Stonewall Scotland, See Me and COSLA Migration Matters Group. His passion and commitment saw him inducted into the show races in the Red Card Hall of Fame, quite an accolade and an appointee to the Quality and Diversity Board for the Scottish Football Association. He enjoys his football, so probably enjoyed last night's match. He's worked closely with project partners Meekop and with Gypsy Travellers locally for a number of years and has coordinated an annual health and wellbeing event. He has a very keen interest in the First World War, which led him to the development of a successful heritage lottery funded project that focused on the contribution made to the war effort by Gypsy Travellers, which he will tell you more about directly. Thank you, David. Thank you very much. Um, I think I've got the difficult slot before lunch and after two um, very well qualified academic speakers. So um, I hope I'll do that justice to the fact that I've been invited along today and for Seamus' kind introduction. So thank you. The, the first slide you'll see is actually Seamus' artwork and that will appear um, throughout the presentation. Um, I think it's appropriate that it's included in the presentation because I've only got a wee Fiat Panda car and I couldn't bring all his artwork up with me in my Panda car along with the exhibition context today. So, um, Seamus has been um, a very active and um, valuable contributor to the project I'm about to talk about, so I think it's right that his artwork is reflected in it. So, just going to... Um, as, as Seamus said in the introduction, um, the, the project I'm talking about is a World War I centenary project. The, the World War I um, centenary project opened up a lot of avenues for um, partnership work, for engagement work, for being able to explore what happened 100 years ago. Um, and one area that we identified that hadn't been looked at was in relation to the contribution that had been made by Gypsy Traveller community members. Um, so, so that allowed us to, to maybe look at something we could explore and um, I'm grateful that Seamus was a willing um, participant in helping us get that off the ground and helping us tap into and reach other community members who were able to contribute their stories as well. <coughs> Some more artwork. Um, I think that's Christine's um, relative. So the project itself... Um, um, the, it was in two parts. The first part was a commemoration of the contribution, service and sacrifice mem made by members of the Gypsy Traveller community locally. And there was also a second part to the project we included, and that was about the local impact of shell shock and combat stress, comparing it then and now. Now that was done deliberately because of the, the local hospitals in Perth and Kinross, Murray Royal Hospital was used a um, um, hundred years ago to treat soldiers who had been um, experience in shell shock, as was Murthley Hospital, which existed at the time but no longer exists. However, I will specifically focus on the Gypsy Traveller part of the project today, given the nature of the event here. Um, so the project was entitled Heroes or Raj Hantel, and um, thanks to Seamus for the, the, the suggestion for the title, we, we did want to use a cant word and a cant expression, Raj Hantel, meaning mad people or mad folk. Um, we want it to be provocative, we want it to be challenging and um, I think that was fair to say that we probably achieved that by, by calling it that. We wanted to explore whether people felt that um, people were being treated fairly for, for how they'd um, served in the war, how it was reflected, how their sacrifice and contribution was made. So we did want a title that drew you in and, and, and caused you to consider that. Um, the funder was the Heritage Lottery Fund. Um, it's a couple. The next one, yeah. And it was a volunteer driven project but was supported by a number of key partners across the council, different departments, including um, Nicholas at the time was part of the council, Culture Perth and Kinross are now a separate entity in their own right. 
Uh, MECOP Gypsy Traveller Carers Project helped us and other organisations there like SAFA, the Black Watch Museum, Black Watch Association and Plus Perth which is a mental health charity which helped with the, mental, uh, with the shell shock side of the project and various archives at Blair Castle and at the NHS Day side. Key project work. I mentioned research. Uh, research is very important. Obviously, we want to, to tell story. And Nicola highlighted a lot of areas where you can find some of the information that we did find. Um, local studies and archives, newspaper archive, Blair Castle, national research papers, books and publications, the NHS Tayside Archive at Dundee University, which was particularly around the shell shock um, and, and the treatment that soldiers received um, 100 years ago, photographs. Um, personal stories. People did come forward with their personal stories. I know that oral history is a big um, part of, of Gypsy Traveller culture and, and it's vital that these stories are told and retained and not hidden, um, which I think is the theme you're, you're, you're talking about today. And obviously the artwork, um, particularly that by, by Seamus, which is presented on, on the slides today. Personal contributions. We also had a personal contribution at the launch in terms of um, the Shell Shock site from an author, Susie Grogan, um, who has a book called Shell Shock Britain. And what did we find out? Um, well, Nicola's already talked about one or two of. Um, she's so desperate to show you the picture of Kitty, the Duchess of Athol, there that she, she skipped that slide. The media coverage at the time. A um, hundred years ago, was the media portrayal of gypsy travellers any fairer um, than it is now? Um, that's probably debatable. Um, there are some media stories in um, on the storyboards out there. I'll let you draw your own conclusions. My own view was, um, having read them, that they could be perceived as being quite patronising at best and probably quite discriminatory at um, worst. And that was 100 years ago. And you can look at media articles today and things probably haven't changed too much. If I can just quote one um, article here, which we've got... Um, and I think it does, it does relate to a relative of Seamus. Um, I would do. It's from the Perthshire Advertiser on the 3rd of October 1917, and it's headlined, Well Known Nomad Wounded. And it's got William Johnson, an Athol Tinker, now in the Black Watch, is at present at home on convalescent furlough. He was wounded at Lewes, the Somme, and Ypres, so three wounds, and wears a good conduct stripe. Now, on the face of it, that story sounds fair enough, but... Do they feel it necessary to mention in the media that he's home on leave in case people think he's deserted? Um, because there is a perception that Tinkers or Tinker soldiers were deserting at the time, which we've proven is not necessarily the case. And do they feel it necessary to mention that he wears a good conduct stripe because he's a Tinker soldier? Um, do they mention good conduct stripe? So it could be read in many different ways. My own view is that um, it should be focusing on the fact that a soldier has been wounded three times and his contribution should be recognised how much um, of an impact that must have had on an individual and his family. But, but just a, an aside. So there are a couple of stories like that out there and I would urge you to read them in more detail and draw your own conclusions. Um, separation allowances, which Nicola mentioned in her presentation as well, that, that highlighted, um, and it was a real find in, in our research, that People were forced to give up their traditional lifestyle if they wanted to receive an allowance, which all soldiers were entitled to. If their family members wanted to receive an allowance, if they were a Gypsy Traveller community member, it was, they weren't, were only going to get that allowance if they had a, a fixed address, if you like. So they had to give up their traditional lifestyle if they wanted to get the allowance that they were entitled to um, for their family members facing a bullet. A bullet and a shell and a gun didn't have an address on it um, for these soldiers. Um, all these soldiers were facing the same um, sacrifices, but their families had to give up their traditional lifestyle if they wanted to, to receive the separation allowance. And I think that's quite shameful, um, um, but certainly a, a real fight. The uh, Departmental Committee on Tinkers, I won't dwell on that too much because Nicola's mentioned it quite a bit. But again, it's authority looking at lifestyles of a community, of a society. And again, 100 years on, we've still got governments and government groups looking at health, welfare, education and housing um, around travellers and their lifestyle. And so how far have we really moved in that 100 years? I don't know. And most importantly, I think, um, our, our, our project helped highlight the courage and sacrifice the Gypsy Traveller community members had made, like so many others during the First World War, during that terrible conflict. 
And I think those personal stories, which again are, are on the storyboards right side, which are in this booklet, which is free, so please take one, we've got a lot, so please go away, take it, um, tell those stories. And if there are others out there that are hidden, that we don't know about, please come forward and tell us them. Please let us know. The more we have, the more we can leave a lasting legacy of the contribution that was made by, by Gypsy Traveller community members. So our achievements, we, we did have a formal launch to our exhibition way back in 2015. It had media coverage. It was launched by the Provost of Perth and Kinross and was attended by quite a wide variety of participants and audience members. Our storyboards there, a sample of which are outside, they're a lasting legacy. They can be used if you want to borrow them for exhibitions elsewhere. Please contact us. We're keen to that, that this story is told and is there to be told for as long as people want us to tell it. Um, there's artwork, Seamus's artwork, which has been um, displayed in the presentation as explained. That, that is there, that's part of the exhibition that we've got and we hope to find a permanent home for that and that's part of the discussion you've had earlier today and as a, a legacy of this discussion today about where artwork is stored and displayed in future. Um, the artefacts that we had, we had people bringing forward their own photographs, their stories, their artefacts, their, their, their mementos that we were able to display at our launch. Um, we have a booklet which I mentioned and I will plug again. Please take this booklet, it has a lasting legacy, it does tell in more detail than a, a ten minute presentation can do justice. To. Um, the postcards was a selection of Seamus's artwork which were used for promotion, promoting um, the, the launch of the exhibition. Again, there are some there, please take them away and um, it's wonderful artwork, why shouldn't you take it away? Um, and finally, um, we were able to, to highlight the exhibition and take it across to a number of venues across Perth and Kinross. And more, most recently, I was able to show it in Glasgow at uh, uh, an event that Seamus invited us along to. So we are keen to get that exhibition taken out as wide as possible. If people have venues, free venues would be better. Um, it doesn't cost us anything. Um, we would happily share those materials. And we hope that in time, the, the contents of the exhibition can have a permanent home somewhere in this area. I think that's me, probably. So thank you very much for, again, inviting me along today. I hope I've given you a brief um, overview of the important project that we were involved in. And again, I'd like to thank Seamus particularly for his um, contribution to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, David. I think your talk illustrates that uh, art and history marry well and bring our culture and heritage to life. As I said earlier, I'd just like to uh, re-emphasise that there's a, a range of different uh, leaflets, pamphlets, booklets and uh, other you know, pieces of literature available. So please, if you're milling around, feel free to uh, pour over these and you know, cross somebody's farm with silver and you'll maybe get one if you're lucky.